Hello friends. Welcome to my video on how to send temperature and humidity data from an ESP32 to a local host XAMPP server. In this video, I'll be walking through the entire process step by step, starting with setting up the Arduino IDE for ESP32, installation of XAMPP on your computer, creating a database in PHP my admin, writing PHP script to store data to MySQL database, and finally, writing the code to send the temperature and humidity data to localhost. By the end of this video, you'll have a working prototype that you can customize and build upon to create your own projects. In this project, I am using the XAMPP as a local server. It will be used to receive temperature and humidity data from ESP32 and then store that data into the database. XAMPP is an open source software stack that includes Apache server, MySQL database, and PHP scripting language. Apache is a web server component of XAMPP. You can use it to host a web page that will display the temperature and humidity data in real time. Next, I am also using the MySQL server. It is a database component of XAMPP, and it will be used to store the temperature data in the database table. Finally, I am also using the PHP scripting language. I will use it to write PHP script to insert data into the database. Let's start our project by setting up the Arduino IDE for ESP32. Here, first you need to install the ESP32 board. You can install it from the boards manager, which is located in the tools menu of Arduino IDE. Here, you just need to install the version 2.0.4. Next, you need to install the DHT sensor library. You can install it from the library manager. Here, search for DHT sensor library. Then, install the latest version of the library with all the dependencies. This library is required to work with DHT 11 temperature and humidity sensor. Now the Arduino IDE setup is complete. Next, here is the wiring diagram. You just follow it to make connections. Here, I have connected the ESP32 and DHT11 sensor on the breadboard. You need to double check the wiring to avoid hardware damage. So make the connections carefully. Next step is to download the XAMPP server. To do this, we'll go to the Apache Friends website. It is the official website for XAMPP. Once you are on the website, you'll see a list of available downloads for different operating systems. You will need to select the download that's appropriate for your operating system. For example, I am using Windows, so I'll select the Windows version of XAMPP. Once you have selected the appropriate download, just click on the download button and wait for the download to finish. Once the download is complete, you will need to navigate to the download location. And here, you just run the installer to install the XAMPP. The installation process is straightforward and it should take only a few minutes. You simply follow the prompts to complete the installation. If you see a warning from your firewall, make sure to allow access to the Apache server. During the installation process, your computer might reboot to make changes in the system. Now we have installed the XAMPP on the computer. Next, you need to start the server. To start the XAMPP server, you will need to launch the XAMPP control panel. This can be done by navigating to the XAMPP installation directory. You just open the XAMPP folder from C drive. And here, Locate the file zampcontrol.exe. Then, open the file by double clicking on it. Once the XAMPP control panel is open, you will see a list of services, including Apache and MySQL. You can start both services by clicking on Start button next to each service. Make sure that both Apache and MySQL are running. Green status indicates that the both services are up and running. If you see a warning from your firewall, make sure to allow access to the Apache server. Now both Apache and MySQL are running, 
so we are ready to start using XAMPP as a local server. Now that we've installed and started the XAMPP server, let's test it to make sure that it is working correctly. To do this, you just open a web browser and type the local host in the address bar. Then press enter. This should take you to the XAMPP welcome page. If you see the XAMPP welcome page, it means that our server is up and running. From here, we can navigate to different sections of XAMPP, such as PHP My Admin. It is the tool that will be used to create the database and table. Next step is to create a new database. So click on the PHP My Admin. This should bring up the PHP My Admin login page. By default, XAMPP comes with a root user account with no password. So, to log into PHP My Admin, you can simply enter root as the username and leave the password field blank. Then click on login, it will take you to the dashboard of the PHP My Admin. You can also check the default username and password by clicking on user accounts tab. On the next screen, you can see username root with no password. Here just look at no written in red color. If you want to change the password, then just click on edit. And on the next page, click on the change password button. It will take you the next screen. Here, type your new password in the text boxes. After entering the password, you just click on go button and it will change the database password. Next step is to create a database. So look at the left hand side of the screen. Here you can see a section called databases. This section provides a list of all the available databases and allows you to select a specific database to work with. By clicking on a database name, you can view its tables, fields, and other related information, as well as you can perform various database operations such as creating new tables, executing SQL queries, and so on. Next, to create a new database, you just click on New button. Next, give your database a name. For this project, let's call it SensorDB. Then, click on Create button to create the database you will see a message confirming that the database has been created. Your new database will now appear in the list of databases on the left-hand side of the screen. Next, you need to create a table to store the temperature and humidity data. So click on the database you just created. After selecting the database, you will see Create Table screen. Here, you will need to enter the table name. So. Enter DHT11 in the table name field. Next, under the number of columns field, enter 4 to create 4 fields. This is because we need to create 4 columns in our table. We will use first column for storing ID, next 2 columns for temperature and humidity, and the last column will be used to store the current date and time. Next, Click on Create button, it will take you to the next screen. Here, enter the first column name as ID. Next, under the type field, select integer as data type. Next, set the auto increment attribute to true. This means that every time a new record is added to the DHT11 table, the ID column will automatically increment to the next available number. This helps to ensure that each record in the table has a unique identifier. Next, set the second column name as temperature. This column will be used to store the temperature data coming from the ESP32. Next, set the data type as integer. Next, set the third column name as humidity. The data type of this field will also be integer. We will use last field to store the current date and time. It will allow you to track changes in temperature and humidity over time. Next, set its data type as date time. And set the default value to current timestamp. The last step is to click on the save button at the bottom to create the new table. 
That's it. You have successfully created a new table named DHT11 on your local host server. The table will also appear in the list of databases on the left hand side of the screen. You just need to click on it to see the data saved in the table. Right now, the table is empty because we have just created it and not added any data to it yet. So now, let's check if the database is working by adding some data to DHT11 table. I will use SQL query to insert data into the table. So click on SQL tab to open the SQL editor. Here I will write a query to store data into the table. So here I have added the query. Let's understand it. The first part of the query is insert into. This statement used to insert the data into the table. The next part is DHT11. This is the name of the table where the data will be inserted. Next, I have added the name of the columns where I want to store the temperature and humidity data. Next, here is a list of the actual values that I want to insert into the table. The first value is 23 and it will be stored in the temperature column. The second value 42 and it will be stored in the humidity column. Now the query is completed, you click on the go button to execute the query. Here you can see the message, one row inserted. It means that the data is inserted into the table. Let's check it by clicking on the browse button. Here you can see the data is inserted in the temperature and humidity column. Now, it's time to test it by writing PHP script to insert some fake data in the database. This will help us to make sure that everything is working correctly before we start sending the real data from the ESP32. To write a PHP script, first you need to create a project folder where you will store all the project files. So, navigate to the XAMPP installation directory from C drive. Here, open the htdocs folder. This is where you will create your project folder. So, create a new folder and give it a name such as dht11 underscore project. Now the project folder is created. Next, we will create a new PHP file in this folder. Give your file a name for this project. Let's call it testdata.php. Now open this file with your favorite text editor. I'm using Notepad++ which is a really quick and easy to use text editor. Let's write some code. I will start by adding opening and closing tags of PHP. And between the tags, I will print a message on the screen. Hello, test is OK. This text will be displayed when we will open this file in the web browser. Now save the file by pressing Ctrl plus S. Make sure you must save this file in the DHT11 project folder with PHP extension. Next, open your web browser and enter the URL localhost forward slash then write the project folder name which is dht11 underscore project then slash and then write the file name that we have created earlier which is test underscore data dot php now press enter to load the page you can see the text is displayed on the screen now it's time to write a php script to insert fake data in the database to see if database is working properly. This will help us to make sure that everything is working correctly before we start sending the real data from the ESP32. So, again open the file testdata.php. Here, we will add some PHP code. So, let's start by defining some variables to store important information like our database username and password and some other information. We need four variables for this. The first one is for host name, which is localhost in our case. Next, we need to enter the database username. As we discussed earlier, the default username of database is root with no password. So, enter the username root. 
and we don't need to set a password for it. So, leave the password field empty. The last variable is database. And here, we will enter the name of the database that we have created earlier. So, write the database name, sensor DB. Next, we will establish a connection to the database by using a function called MySQL Connect. This function required four parameters. We have already stored the parameters in the variables above that are host name, username, password, and database name. Next, I will add an if condition to handle the situation if the connection to the database fails. So if the connection fails, then the program will stop running and an error message will be displayed to explain the reason for the error. Next, if the program successfully connect to the database, then we will just display a message, database connection is OK. Before writing the script to insert data in the table, we will test the project to make sure that everything is working properly. So, open the file in the web browser. Here, I will just refresh the page because I have already opened the file. Here we have an error message, unknown database name, sensor DB. It means the database name is wrong. So, moves back to the code file. Here, make sure that the name of the database is the same as the name we used when we created it. Here, the spelling of the database name is not correct. So, I will just fix it. Now, let's test it again to make sure that everything is working properly. As you can see, the connection to the database is now successful. Next, we will write SQL query to save the data into the DTH11 table. We will use the same query that we have created before. So, I will just paste the query here. Finally, we'll execute our SQL query using the MySQL query function. I have also added the if condition here. And it will print out a message to indicate whether the query was successful or not. So, Here's the final code for our testdata.php file. Now, we have written our PHP script, so we will test it using the web browser. If everything is working correctly, we should see a message indicating that a new record is created successfully. To make sure that the data has been inserted into the database, go back to phpMyAdmin. Here, click on Sensor DB Database. Then, click on DHT11 table to select it. Here, you can see the temperature and humidity data that we have just inserted in the table. Next, I will make one more change in the code. Currently, the temperature and humidity data is hard-coded in the SQL query, which is not a good practice. So instead of hard-coded data, I will use variables. So, First I will delete the value for the temperature and then set the variable name t for temperature. The same way I will set the variable name h for humidity. Next, above the SQL query, I will declare two variables. The first one is t, it will be used to store the temperature and the second variable is h and it will be used to store the humidity. This way, if we want to change the temperature or humidity values, we can simply modify the variables and the query will automatically use the new values. Using variables is a good programming practice because it makes the code more flexible and easier to modify in the future. And that's it for this section. In the next section, we will write our ESP32 code to send data to the XAMPP server. Here, First I will include libraries that are required for the project to function properly. The first one is the Wi-Fi library. And this library will be used for connecting to the Wi-Fi network. The next library is the HTTP client library. And it will be used to send HTTP requests from ESP32 to our local host server. Next, we need to define the address of the web server where we want to send our temperature data. Here, first, you need to enter the IP address of your computer, which you can easily find by opening the command prompt. 
So, open the command prompt on your computer. Here you can use the ipconfig command to display the IP address of your computer. Now, here you can see the IP address of the computer. Next, you just need to enter this IP address in the ESP32 code, which is 192.168.100.6. After that, we need to enter the name of the folder where we have saved our project file. We have already created the project folder in the XAMPP directory, which is dht11 underscore project. And we will enter the same folder name here in the ESP32 code. Finally, we need to enter the name of the PHP file where we want to send our data. We have created this file in the dht11 project folder. Here is the PHP file testdata.php. And we will enter the same file name in the ESP32 code. Now the URL is ready. If you're not sure about the URL, you can copy it and then paste it into your web browser. If you see a success message in your browser, it means the URL is properly configured. Just remember, you must start the Apache and MySQL services before testing the URL. Next, I will define two variables, SSID and password that we will use to connect to my Wi-Fi router or mobile hotspot. You should replace the values inside the quotes with the SSID and password of your own network. Next, I will define two more variables for temperature and humidity, which will store the sensor data that we will send to the local host. In this example, I have both initialized to 50, but in the next section of the video, we will replace the temperature and humidity data with the real data coming from the DHT11 sensor. Let's move to the setup function. Here, first I will use serial.begin function to set up serial communication between the ESP32 and your computer. I will just use it for debugging purpose. Next, I will establish a connection to the Wi Fi router by calling connect Wi Fi function. This function will attempt to connect to the Wi-Fi network using the SSID and password that we have defined earlier. I have already written this function and I will just add it below the loop function. This function contains a sample code that is used in many ESP32 projects that require Wi-Fi connectivity. It is a standard code for connecting to any Wi-Fi network. You can also use this function in other projects you make with the ESP32 board, so you don't have to create a new function every time you want to connect to a Wi-Fi network. And here, I have called it in the setup function, and it will take care of the Wi-Fi connection. Next, let's move in the loop function. Here, first I will check whether the ESP32 is connected to the Wi-Fi network. If it is not, then it calls the connect Wi-Fi function to attempt to reconnect to the Wi-Fi. Next, I have created a string variable called postData. It holds the temperature data that we want to send to the local server. Here, first I have added the temperature value which is 50. It is the same temperature value that we have defined above. Next, the same way I have added the humidity value which is also 50, as we have defined before. The complete string is look something like this. Now we have defined the post data string with temperature data stored in it. Now we will send this data to the server using the HTTP POST request. So, we will create a new HTTP client object called HTTP. It will be used to send an HTTP POST request to the web server. Next, let's establish a connection to the XAMPP server. Here is begin function of the HTTP client object. This function will connect the ESP32 to the web page, which is defined in this URL variable. In this example, it is testdata.php, which we have created earlier. So the ESP32 will connect to the testdata.php file 
and we will send temperature data to this file. To send the temperature data to the server, we will use POST method. This method will send an HTTP POST request to the server with the temperature data. We have stored this data in the POST data variable. An HTTP POST method will send it to the test data.php file. Now the temperature data is received at the server, so we will store it to our database table. First we will check if there is any valid data received or not using the if condition. And if we have some valid temperature and humidity data, then we will store that data into these variables. So, first I will store the temperature data into the t variable that we have defined for temperature. The same way, I will store the humidity data to h variable. That's it. This file is ready to store the temperature data into the database. So let's move back to our ESP32 code to complete it. Here, I have used HTTP code variable to store the response code from the server. If the data is successfully posted to the server, then we will receive the response 200. Next, I will define another variable called payload. It will store the response message from the server. The message looks something like this, database connection is ok, new record created successfully. These are the same messages that we have seen earlier, while we are testing our PHP file. In case of error, the payload string contains the error message, with the reason of the error. Finally, I will print the URL, post data, HTTP code, and payload variables to the serial monitor, for testing purpose. Here, I forget to include a special message, called header. Header helps the server to understand the type of information sending to it. Now the code is ready to upload, so without wasting time let's upload it to our ESP32 board. Once the code is uploaded, open Serial Monitor. Here you can see, the ESP32 device started sending temperature and humidity data, to the local host server. Here, the HTTP code 200 means that, the data was successfully sent to the local host. You also look at the response message, database connection is ok, new record created successfully. Let's verify it from the MySQL database. Here click on the browse button to reload the table data. Here you can see, the data has been stored in our database table. Next. I will add the DHT11 sensor in the ESP32 code, to send the real temperature data to the server. Here, first I will include DHT sensor library. Then, I will define the DHT sensor pin to pin number 19, which corresponds to the digital pin on the ESP32, where the DHT11 sensor is connected. In the next line, I will define the type of the sensor, which is DHT11. Finally, I will create DHT11 sensor object. It will be used to read temperature data from the sensor. Next, I will set the temperature and humidity variables to zero. This is because I will use these variables to store the actual data that comes from the DHT11 sensor. Next, I will start the communication with the DHT11 sensor using the DHT11.begin function. It is required to call this function before attempting to read any data from the sensor. Next, I will read temperature and humidity data from DHT11 sensor, and then I will store it into these variables. To do this, I will create a new function called load DHT11 data. I have added it just below the loop function. This function will read the temperature data from the DHT11 sensor and then store it in the variables that I have already defined above, for storing temperature and humidity data. Next, I will call this new function inside the main loop function. This way, every time the loop runs, the latest temperature and humidity data will be stored in the variables above. That's all, the remaining code will stay the same without any change. Now hit upload button, 
to upload the code to our ESP32. Once the code is uploaded, open Serial Monitor. Here you can see, our project is started sending temperature and humidity data to the local host. Now, we will check if the data has been saved to the MySQL database. Here, click on the Browse button to see the most recent data that has been saved. You can see, the latest data is now stored in the database. That's all for today. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. See you in the next video. Bye.